Hi, this is Matthew Oates with Salient Process. In this video, I'm going to go over how you can use the new Spark Ignition solution from Salient Process to take your BlueWorks Live process diagrams and convert them in less than five minutes uh, into IBM BPM. We already can do that with subscription service today, but the Ignition Toolkit allows us to extend that to make those process applications truly reusable. Remember, the Spark Ignition solution both focuses on making BlueWorks Live conversion to IBM BPM processes that are useful very quickly, uh, but it also has the capability to um, build just IBM BPM process applications quickly that might not even use BlueWorks Live. This video focuses on the BlueWorks Live features, but check out the other videos uh, to see how you can use Spark Ignition to accelerate any process application development. All right, to start, let's take a look at a uh, BlueWorks Live process diagram. Uh, so I've created this process diagram ahead of time. This isn't any different than uh, what you might create in BlueWorks Live today. So uh, you'll see we have swim lanes here, uh, different participants, different milestones, we have a couple decisions that need to get made. This is just an example of maybe how a salesperson would request a demo from someone in my role, maybe a product manager, uh, to have a demo be given to uh, our customers. So this is pretty straightforward BlueWorks Live stuff. Uh, within BlueWorks Live, we can fill in information. We can get documentation. We'll actually come back to that documentation a little, a little bit uh, because that's what Spark Ignition uses uh, to populate useful work in IBM BPM. All right, so to get started, the first thing that you do uh, to bring a BlueWorks Live model over to IBM BPM is you're going to create a process application in IBM BPM. So here I have the process center of an IBM BPM environment, and I'll go ahead and create uh, request a demo for sailing. And we'll just name this here. We'll go ahead and create this process application. Once we create the process application, uh, we'll go ahead and open it. And we're going to take advantage of the existing uh, BlueWorks Live subscription feature in IBM BPM. Uh, so as I log in here, uh, I, I do want to make a point. Salient Process partners with IBM extensively. We partnered with them on our UI toolkit. In fact, IBM is building the Spark UI toolkit into IBM BPM right now. Um, we have a design principle at Salient Process called uh, works with IBM, meaning we want to take advantage of the features already in IBM BPM products, and we want to extend those. We don't want to use them in a way that they're not intended, uh, and we want to take advantage of the roadmap that IBM BPM has, which has really had some tremendous uh, growth in the last uh, few years with the Web PD and, uh, and other great features. So this is one feature, this BlueWorks size subscription process, that we think was, was underused, and we investigated why it was underused, uh, and we think uh, we could add more to it, so that's what we've done with the Spark Ignition Toolkit. All right, so I've gone in and I've selected a space. I'm going to select my process that I just showed in BlueWorks Live. It's going to go ahead and subscribe to BlueWorks Live uh, for that specific process in this process application. Uh, so here we'll see the subscription comes up here. If you've never used this feature before, uh, what this does, it actually brings in uh, some process application artifacts. So we have a process here, some teams, some other information. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open the process. Uh, so see this looks very similar to what we saw in BlueWorks Live. Uh, why don't I go ahead and just expose this to, to everyone so we can actually run this from the portal. I'm going to do that. I'm going to take a snapshot. And now I'm actually done uh, working in Process Designer from a Spark Ignition sp standpoint. So that really wasn't any coding at all, but uh, if you consider anything in Process Designer more technical or coding, that, that's as, as technical as you need to get to get started with uh, BlueWorks Live to BPM uh, automatic uh, development that Spark Ignition can do for you. All right, so let's go ahead and look at uh, the process portal here. So I'm going to uh, log out and log back in so we can see that new process uh, become available in uh, our in process portal. All right, so here we go. We see request the demo at the bottom. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and press request the demo here. That'll start a, a new instance of our process that we just subscribed to. 
Uh, and we'll see here we have a, a task that comes up. And uh, if you've seen this before, you're probably not going to be surprised. But if you haven't seen this before, you might be surprised. All you actually get with that subscription is just a placeholder. You just have an OK button. Um, and again, it's great that the model was brought in. But uh, obviously, you can't run your business based upon you know a, a process model. And all that's behind each of those activities is just press OK. It's not going to have any flow. It's not going to provide context. Uh, so you need to do more. And that's really where Ignition comes in. Uh, so I'm actually going to go over here. We have Ignition loaded in this environment. So uh, Ignition admins will be able to see uh, a few more features over here. I'm going to go ahead and say, let's, let's make a process application ready for Ignition. All right, so what this is going to do is going to, in the process portal, bring up a nice user-friendly menu that says, all right, stage one, which process application do you want to have us automatically build a process uh, an ignition ready process application for you. So we're going to press the one I just selected here. I'm going to say make ignition ready. It's going to prompt me for some user ID and password. That's because ignition is about to do uh, some heavy lifting. I mean, we're, we're replacing uh, days, if not weeks, of development um, here in about 30 seconds. And so that's a big change to a process application potentially. You only want certain users to be able to do that. Uh, I am an approved user, so I'll go ahead and have that. What this is doing is going and retrieving uh, all of the pieces you need to enhance the process application that we just subscribed to. So it's going to get the Ignition Toolkit that has the powerful Ignition Coach View and all the persistent features that we need. It's going to get the Spark UI Toolkit. Remember, the Spark UI Toolkit is getting built into IBM BPM. Uh, when it's built in by IBM BPM, you won't need the Spark UI Toolkit. But for now, Ignition does require the Spark UI Toolkit. It's going to go get the process application that we had. Then you'll see down here it's going to add Ignition activities and create Ignition templates. What that's doing is actually doing development in the process application that we just subscribed to. It's mapping things. It's replacing activities with more useful activities. It's putting data behind those activities. Um, so it's done all of that heavy lifting for us. And now it's asking, do you want to immediately have this ready in your process application, or do you want to download the generated Twix file? So maybe you can uh, do something else with it, maybe put it in another environment if you want to. Um, but for now, we're going to just go ahead and auto import. So what this is going to do is just bring into the, my process application a new version of my process, ap process application that's going to have much more context. All right, so now, now that I've done this, why don't I go ahead and request another demo? It's the same thing. It's just a new version of a process application, a new snapshot if you're familiar with the uh, IBM BPM terminology. Um, so now that we have this, we'll see, OK, well, first off, uh, we've cleaned up the name a little bit. We've removed some of the default things that are added here, like um, step and, and to the subject lines. And so what's going to happen now? So it's actually loading. Um, a new version of the process application. Each time you load a new version of a process application and you've, you've added uh, a lot of new features, it takes a little bit uh, extra to load, uh, a little bit extra time to do some of the compilation that's needed. But here we go. All right, so instead of an OK button, we're going to start seeing useful things uh, that are being rendered to the user who needs to, uh, to essentially make this request. So we'll look at what opens up by default. Uh, you'll see to-dos here, right? So we have three different things a salient uh, salesperson might need to do to make a uh, request. So we would need to share customer information with the product manager. We need to create an opportunity folder in Box. Salient uses Box for our storage, so we make sure that if, it, if there's ever a request, we'll have to do that. Uh, and then maybe provide more supporting documentation that you can add to, to the Box folder. We'll see these two tasks or to-dos are designated as required. What that means is maybe I can say one is in progress and one is done. We can track the progress of all the required steps. But if I try to complete, it's going to say, nope, you can't complete here because uh, you haven't completed everything. Well, what if I want to do something? Maybe I'm done with this, but I still need to get some more customer information together. And maybe I don't need to provide any supporting application, uh, supporting documentation. So I'll say not applicable for now. This one's done, but I still need to come back to this. Make request is actually designated to be able to complete, uh, cancel this request, or postpone. So I'm going to go ahead and just postpone here. All right, so when I postpone, it does what you would expect postpone to do. Remember, 
all we had previously was just an OK button. You can't do these things like postpone or complete, or there's really no context whatsoever. Um, but now I can come back to make request. I can see my status is here. So maybe let's go ahead and say I'm, I'm, I'm done here. All right, so I'm going to move on with uh, this. And then we'll see uh, that, uh, well, you know what, let's look at the process real quick. When you look at the process diagram, not only is it useful to have context in each activity, but you'll see there's decisions here. So Ignition also maps the right flows of the decision to the right uh, spots in the process. So for example, at this review request step, if I were to approve it, it would proceed here, but if I were to not deny it, it would need to go back to the salesperson. Uh, so there's two things that Ignition has to do to make sure this works. One, it has to map the actual logic on this gateway in IBM BPM. Uh, but two, uh, you can't just have a uh, postpone or complete. Uh, we should actually expect in review request, it actually has different paths that it could follow uh, after that. And so we'll see different outcomes that we can select. See task action here. Now this is an approve or deny step. So if I were uh, to deny this, we would expect it to go back to the person making the request and they could make the decision, do they want to cancel this now that maybe it was denied or do they want to um, pr proceed with a, you know, more information. Um, one other thing I want to point out here is uh, we have more context than just to-dos. Now we have a description here. So this description is, is describing to this person, what is this process going to be doing? Uh, we can associate helpful links um, in the uh, in each activity. So for example, if I wanted to have a, a link to the IBM ho homepage, I can embed that directly into an activity. Or if I wanted to have a, a video, maybe a training video, uh, if you have processes that have high turnover and you want people to understand, well, what exactly does it mean maybe to share customer information? Or how do you do that in another system and then come back to BPM and say when you're done? Uh, you could embed training videos here. Um, you'll also notice you've seen maybe give feedback here. You see these suggestions here. Uh, based upon feedback from our customers uh, with the first versions of this, they want to say, you know what, sometimes we want to change these things uh, without having to have a new deployment. And we want to get feedback directly embedded in the, in the t solution uh, to know if we need to improve or change something. So for example, um, we could say it's also important important to share the customer address, maybe. Um, and so we can say, for this to do, uh, I have an idea that maybe we need to add some more detail here. And this will go to an admin to say, all right, you know what, in the make request to do step, someone has a suggestion that we add more context here. Maybe someone wants to say, um, you know, creating an opportunity is not required. So, uh, or maybe add a new task. So we can say we are missing a task. Um, please add the ABC task, right? And so this actually goes to a screen uh, that allows an admin to say, okay, people are uh, providing me feedback and I need to um, get that uh, updated. And I won't have to update, you know, with a new deployment to a production environment. I can actually update that real time at another um, panel that I'll actually show in another video. All right, so uh, I'm sure you're asking, well, how is this possible? Uh, so that took maybe about 13 minutes to show and actually talk through everything. The actual working and the getting it done uh, was about five minutes. We tried to keep the whole design around five minutes to actually do the development. And in two minutes here, why don't I just show you uh, how Spark Ignition actually got this context from BlueWorks Live. Uh, so if we look at BlueWorks Live here, remember I showed you we, we work with documentation. Uh, so what we wanted to do uh, to essentially provide the context that's required in IBM BPM, we wanted all of that to be able to be provided in BlueWorks Live in a really approachable way. Uh, so what we decided to do was leverage uh, the documentation section. You can add any documentation you want at the top from uh, like you do today. Uh, but at the bottom, what we've done is essentially created a certain type of template, uh, a certain type of format for you to uh, 
uh, add the requirements that you want Ignition to use to create useful content in IBM VPN. So it's a really approachable structure here. If you ever make outlines or bulleted this, it's exactly the same. Uh, so for example here, Ignition act, hashtag Ignition Activity means this step needs to have an Ignition, ignition Activity created called Make Request, and here's that description. Remember the first step had complete, cancel, postpone. Well, this is how Ignition knows that the make request needs to be a complete, cancel, postpone. As opposed to the review request, remember review request, it needed to have uh, approve, deny, and postpone. Uh, so we can look at this documentation, and there's some really neat features about this. One, you can see it's not super strict. Uh, we all know business users, if you have to put specific structure, or maybe typos or, or, or syntax, uh, that can really be cumbersome on business users. It, this is not that at all. In fact, you can see, you can have spaces in Ignition and To-Do. You don't have to have it exactly right. You could have capitalization differences. We even have some various spell check type things in here. So when Ignition actually goes through and, and uses this algorithm to read all of this information, um, it's going to be able to m make some inferences about what's actually intended. Another example would be, you know, some people might like to write out that something's required, or other people might be comfortable just putting a star. So remember, the first two tasks in that first step were required, the second one was here. If you look at links, we can add those links really easily. You can either have the URL directly, or you can just use the rich text format for the links. Uh, so this is how all of this context uh, was provided to Ignition, and so we take this simple, just the model that already exists, plus some really easy to structure uh, documentation, and that's how we can create something that's really useful uh, right off the bat with uh, about five minutes of, of configuring, uh, no coding, uh, and the end result is a process application that you can uh, use. Uh, so be sure to check out the other videos that we have, we're going to have some videos around how you might extend this to add business objects or custom UI or integrations. Uh, and we're going to have another video where maybe if you don't use BlueWorks Ive, you can create Spark Ignition enabled processes from scratch. Uh, so please check out the videos and thanks for watching.